Hi Stitchy people, how are you today? Uh, it's been a few minutes since I have posted a floss tube and I apologize for that. I'm gonna discuss that more shortly. Um, I hope you're doing well and I hope that you're staying safe and healthy. Um, and welcome back to all of my viewers, uh, my returning subscribers, and welcome to the new folks um, who are here for the first time. If this is your first time, this is uh, this is my floss tube where I talk about all of my cross stitchy goodness. Um, I will talk about uh, projects that I am currently working on, projects that I hope to work on in the near future. Um, sometimes dream projects that maybe I'll never get to. Um, I also talk about products that I love, designers and uh, dyers and stitchers that I love, other floss tubers that I love. I'll talk about stuff that I have purchased and wanna show you, um, all kinds of stitchy goodness. So um, that's what we're here for, though um, with all of the things going on in the world today, I do wanna take a minute, if you'll indulge me, for some real talk. Um, if you're returning, you know that I usually don't bring in a lot of outside stuff to floss tube. I try to keep it stitchy um, and light and happy, um, but there are some really heavy things going on um, and I feel like I need to make sure that I address it here on my floss tube. I want to know, I want everybody to know where I stand so that you can stand where you need to stand, if that makes any sense. So you may have already noticed I am wearing a Black Lives Matter button. So um, that's, that's where I stand. I'm a proponent of Black Lives Matter because this is not a political issue, it's a human issue. Um, and I believe that everybody deserves the right to wake up in the morning and not fear for their life simply because of who they are or what color their skin is. Um, if that's something that you're, you can't get behind, um, I'd respectfully ask that you go ahead and unclick that subscribe button. Um, I don't have a lot of viewers, but I hope that I have viewers who feel similarly um, about human rights and um, the rights of people to live their lives free from fear. I am working on um, creating some fundraising uh, items for my shop. One of the things that I really want to do is raise some money for the Black Lives Matter organization as well as another organization called the Trevor Project. Um, I'm going to put some links in the description if you'd like to learn more about these organizations and or support these organizations as well. And with that, we're going to move on to regular floss tube. So I don't have any happy mail to show you and I'm sad about that because happy mail would be nice right now. <laughs> It's been an emotional several minutes um, getting this on film. So um, so yeah, um, I don't have any happy mail. Uh, the mail is still running really slow because of the virus that shall not be named. Um, so I don't have my um, Zinspired Designs mail. I don't have my latest Kate mail um, and I'm kind of sad. So um, hopefully those will come soon. I do have other stuff that's been in the mail. Um, that sounds really silly. I do have other stuff that I have received in the mail. I have a ton of haul, which I may actually, I may split into a completely separate video, but I promise this time I'm not gonna make you wait a month. Um, my plan is to film it all right now, um, to film it all at one time, and then if it's really, really long, I will split it up and I will post it as two separate videos. So you won't have to wait forever. You'll just have to wait till the second one comes out, which might be a couple days, depending on editing and all that kind of stuff. So. Anyway, so no happy mail. I apologize for that. Um, I would love some happy mail right about now. But um, let's talk about what I'm listening to. So um, I will soon hopefully be listening to audiobooks again. We'll see. Uh, still working from home for the foreseeable future. So the fact that I don't have a commute really kind of puts a damper on the listening to audiobooks. But I'm going to try to make a better concerted effort. Anyway, so the streaming shows that I've been listening to, um, mostly I've been watching House. Um, and I am now in, let's see, I think when we talked last, I had not even started the series. There are eight seasons. I am now like halfway through season six. So you can imagine how much streaming TV I have on in the background. Um, it's been 
almost a month, but I'm six seasons through. So <laughs> that's uh, house has been almost all of my life um, lately and uh, interspersed with some Marvel movies that my husband and I are watching together. We're rewatching the entire Marvel movie series from the beginning um, and we're doing it based on the release date of the movies. So we started with the original Iron Man movie with um, Robert Downey Jr. We started with that. We just watched Iron, not Iron Man. We just watched Thor, uh, The Dark World. So that is the second of the Thor movies. Um, and it falls after the first of the Avengers movies, I think. I want to say it's about halfway through um, the entire movie series. So we're starting now to get into the really good parts because when you start, once we get to Age of Ultron, it gets like really good. I think the next movie we watch is Winter Soldier and then Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one, and then Age of Ultron. So it's getting good getting really good. Love the Marvel Universe. I really, really do. Um, I'm not really well versed in the comic books, but the movies have been fantastic. So very excited to rewatch that. I also love House. Um, I'm watching House specifically because of Stiach alone. Um, and we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Um, but yeah, I love Hugh Laurie. He's fantastic. Um, I have noticed though that every time I have an ache or pain or a friend is not feeling well, I want to go into this crazy diagnostic session with them and I have to stop myself because one, I'm not a medical professional and two, um, really if you watch house episodes back to back to back, it's like the same six maladies that they bring up every single time. Um, but it's never lupus. So if you watch house, you'll get that. <laughs> so uh, that's what I'm listening to. Now let's talk about mania. I should have mentioned that in the opener. So it's now June, uh, it's June 10th. So we're well past mania. Um, I had not set a specific number of starts that I wanted to do for mania. I was kind of leaving it really loose. I think I originally had in my head a goal of at least five starts. I did finish May with eight total starts. Uh, which I think is pretty good, but I also think is enough that um, I'm actually starting to feel a little bit um, manic about how many whips I have. Um, now of those eight starts, I did finish two pieces. So I only actually had added six new whips and one of those is pretty small um, and I've worked on it a little bit more so it won't take me terribly long to finish. Um, but yeah, I am kind of feeling the pressure of having so many works in progress hanging out, um, especially since so many of them are year long um, stitch along sales. So, um, but yeah, so we're in June now, Mania is over um, and so I will do a little bit of a recap for you of Mania. So some of these you will have seen before um, because I did in my last video uh, show you what I had already started and I think I had started four pieces. I think I had done four by then. I think I started number five after um, my last floss two. So um, some of these you will have already seen. Oh, and I just realized that I didn't get out the first one that I finished. So let me pause this real quick and I'm going to go grab that out of the finish box. Isn't that always the way? You think you have everything set up for floss tube and then it turns out you forgot that one thing that you're going to talk about first. So, okay. So this was my first new start for Mania. I'm going to adjust the focus so that I can actually show these to you up close. Um, depending on how much editing I want to do, I may also put in some still pictures for you. So this piece is just breathe, but not on me or near me. Breathe over there. <laughs> So this is a pattern by Fiddlesticks AU. Um, it was a free pattern if I remember correctly. Um, I will try to remember to post links to all of this stuff. Um, I may actually start doing a Link Haven situation like Rachel Ray Craft is doing. Um, not because I need to copy her, but because it's a good idea. And I, I you know, I, isn't flattery the sincerest form of, oh, um, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Anyway, hopefully she won't mind. Um, so yeah, this was my first start for me and also uh, a finish for me. Uh, this was my first finish and I discussed this in um, much greater detail in my last floss tube, so I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of detail now. The fabric is uh, a, um, I had gotten a bag of scraps, 
a grab bag. Okay, let's not call it scraps because they weren't scraps. Um, I had gotten a grab bag from Kathy Davidson of Dying for Cross Stitch uh, with lots and lots of lovely 32 count even weave fabrics. Um, so this is part of one of those pieces. The flosses are from Hand Dyed by Rolanda. Um, and the darkest blue here is actually silk. The rest of it is cotton um, hand dyed by Rolanda. Fantastic. Love, love, love. So this is still probably, um, this is probably second only to um, my Be Well and Stitch Hamsa design from Michelle Bendy Stitchy that I stitched earlier this year. Otherwise, this is pretty much my favorite thing that I've stitched. Um, let's see. Start number two. This is a uh, also a free pattern, Be Well and Stitch. This one was designed by Jeanette Douglas Designs, I believe. And of course, I don't have a pattern where I can see it. Um, but this is Jeanette Douglas Designs, Be Well and Stitch Mini Bouquet, I think is what she calls it. Um, if you, I'll try to put a still image in of what it looked like when you saw it last. I have added the second purple flower and I'm almost finished with all of the, um, the leaves and the stems. And so there are two more flowers that go on each side and then a basket and then it will, um, I'll add the words be well. So that one is not far from being done, uh, which makes me very, very happy because again, too many whips make me crazy. Um, this is another piece uh, from that grab bag from Kathy Davidson at Dying for Cross Stitch. Again, these are, actually this is a combination. So the border here is hand dyed by Rolanda. This is one of the same colorways that I used in the last stitch. And then the purple and the green are actually color and cotton. I believe those are from the March um, Floss of the Month Club, I believe. Um, so yeah, that's not long from being finished, which is good. I actually worked on that this week because I just needed something quick to stitch. Um, I love stitching on even weave, especially stitching in hand on even weave. It's really nice. So um, let's see, start number three for Mania. Oop, losing my needles. Arr, this is good. <laughs> Everything's coming apart. Okay, I should really not. Um, where is the back of this? Okay, sorry y'all, I gotta struggle for a second because I've lost my... <laughs> okay, you shouldn't stack projects that have needle minders on them because <laughs> you'll lose your minders and you'll lose your needles. Okay. So uh, this is my third start for Mania. This is Stiach Alone. Um, this is going to be this this face here and it actually looks much more like a face It looks kind of like the Iceman though. So this is Hugh Laurie's face. This is Dr. House um, And it's going to say above him bless this house um, So this is the Stiach pattern for Stiach alone 2020 um, I am team captain of team sips and stitches uh, with me on that team are um, Rachel Ray Craft as well as Heike from um, Stone Cold Coffee Crafts, though Heike may not actually be doing Stiach alone. She has participated in um, the regular Stiach along and she may um, participate in that later this year. So this is uh, this is the pattern through week four. Um, the pattern for week five just dropped this past Saturday, but I haven't stitched it yet. And I still have to figure out what kind of border I wanna use here. This fabric is a 14 count Ada that I dyed myself. I ice dyed this. Um, and I'm super happy with um, the number of projects I've gotten out of it because I originally did not like this color at all. I didn't think it worked um, for anything. <laughs> but this is actually the third project that I have used um, this fabric for and, um, and I think it's really nice. So it's worked really well for the stuff that I've worked on. Um, and I actually, I realized I have this little I have these remnants left. These actually are remnants. Um, so one of the, the challenge this week um, is to stitch a teeny tiny stitch. So it's gotta be, you have to first stitch a border of 20 by 20, a square 20 by 20 stitches. And then you have to fit inside it something that gives you life, something that is helping you to survive quarantine. Um, so I think this might just be big enough um, to do that 20, 20 by 20 stitch. So I need to do that like today because I think if I wanna be in the competition, it's due by tomorrow. So um, I do have a little piece of that left 
to try to do that with, which is super exciting. So um, like I said, this is week four. We're up to week five this Saturday, which will be the, the 13th um, of June will be pattern six. There are seven total patterns and then Stiach alone will be done. So uh, they're starting now to try to figure out if they will be able to do a regular stiatch along this year. Um, so they're starting to, to plan for that um, to see if that can happen. So hopefully it will. Um, if it does, I will absolutely keep you all informed. Super excited about that. So keep my needles all together. Um, this you've also already seen. So this is start number four and this is finish number two. This is do small things with great love. And I actually just realized maybe I can finish this and try to auction it for a fundraiser as well. So we'll see. We'll see if I can manage that. Is that something y'all would be into? Like, is this something that you would, you would purchase at an auction for charity? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so this is, uh, this particular fabric is a piece of linen. I think it's 32 count. Uh, came from a grab bag uh, from Mystic Hand Dyed Fabrics. And the flosses are the called for weeks dye works. So that is number four. Now this one will be new to you. Oh, this is where that needle miter goes. Okay. Everything getting stuck together. Okay. Now let's, let's do this. One needle goes there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're watching me struggle. Okay, so this is, let me get this other needle before I lose it. Okay, um, pardon my, my nose is itchy. Um, this is new start number five. So on my Instagram, I had erroneously numbered, um, do small things with great love as number five, but this is the real number five. Uh, this pattern, oh, I forget the name of the designer. Um, it's like Arcata, Arteca. Um, I got this pattern off of everything cross stitch. Um, I will, <clears throat> I will certainly try to put the actual information for this pattern in, um, in the links below uh, and I'll try to insert a picture of the finish um, though I think I showed the I think I showed the pattern in um, the last floss tube so this is ultimately going to be a square of Celtic knotwork uh, in rainbow colors so as you can see I've gotten pretty far um, as you may also notice it is not finished and it is after June 6th so obviously I did not get to enter this into the pride contest for Mystic Hand Dyed, uh, which is unfortunate, but it's okay because I really, I just wanted to stitch this for myself anyway. Um, this works up so fast and it's super zen to work on. I really enjoy doing it and I love looking at the back because um, <laughs> the back looks so neat and tidy. How pretty is that? That's so pretty. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that is start number five. I should be able to finish that relatively soon. Um, we will see how that goes. What else was I going to say about that? I need to get back into it. That's all I really, that's all there really is. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Okay. Make sure I hold this up in the correct direction. This is new start number six. So you may recall that I talked about a couple of Barbara Anna designs, free designs that she had done for Be Well and Stitch. Um, this is the first of those two. This one is called The Key. Um, and it's not much to look at yet because I didn't get much started on it, um, but it is a beautiful, beautiful design with a goose and a dress. And I think Michelle Bendy Stitchy was doing a goose and a dress sal or will do at some point. Um, and I just really love this design. I love, the only the only issue I have with stitching it is that it is a lot of color changes and skipping stitches, um, which I'm not a huge fan of. I don't know why though. Okay. I just realized that it's like super fuzzy for you. To... Okay, it's just, it might be the light. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah, so it is a very nice fun stitch. 
Um, I haven't worked on it much. I haven't stitched a ton in the last couple of weeks for a lot of different reasons. Um, but yeah, this fabric, oh, I didn't, that's what I was going to say about this one. Okay, let me go back for a second. This fabric, uh, this is um, an even weave that doesn't have, you can't tell much. There's a little bit of yellow um, sort of modeled in there. It's mostly this kind of blue-green color, but it's got some yellow or brown kind of in there. Um, this is another grab bag fabric from Mystic Hand Dye. Um, it's an even weave fabric. This gorgeousness, gorgeousness. I can't remember if I talked about this. I think um, if I didn't talk about it on Tube, I talked about it on Zoom, which is why I'm having trouble remembering. This piece of fabric, this gorgeous piece of fabric is from Brandy at Be Stitch Me. And um, it was so funny because it was just one of the random fabrics she posted for Friday Night Fight Night. Um, and that's when she posts, she posts her fabric at, it, I think it ends up being 10 p.m. for me, which is 10 p.m. Eastern, but she's in Central, so it's 9 p.m. Central, uh, when she posts her fabric on her Facebook page. And this showed up, and I was like, oh, that's a pretty blue. And so I went ahead and bought it, and then when it got here, I was looking at it, and it turned out to be the perfect, the perfect blue for this particular pattern. This is almost exactly the same uh, color that the model stitch was done. Um, done on for this particular design. So super excited about that blue. I don't know why I was so thrilled about that particular commingling of events, but I really, really was. So I was super excited to start this one. So I was very happy. Um, this is going to take some time to do. It's not a huge design, but it's a little bit more time consuming just because of the color changing and the skipping of stitches and things like that. But that's going to be, it's going to be so nice. Um, so nice when I get that done. I do have plans to do um, the light as, or this one is the key. The next one is light, which is the fox in the dress. So I do have plans to do that. I think I have the right fabric for it now. That'll be the big thing. I've mostly kitted up the flosses. It's all DMC. I've mostly kitted up the flosses, but I need the perfect fabric. So, and I've lost count. Okay, so that was six. That was new start number six. No. Yes? I can't count. I'm missing something. Yes, that's number two. <laughs> I can't count. <laughs> okay, let me take a sip of water and a breath. And you wondered why it was going to be such a long video. <sighs> okay. So. That was New Start number six. So number seven is a monster. So this is a stitch along that I am working on with Rachel Ray Craft and Heike at Stone Cold Coffee Crafts. Yoga Corn Sal is the hashtag that we're using. And so this was my number seven start. Uh, this is a gorgeous, 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 gorgeous piece of fabric that I have had for ages. And I didn't know what I was going to use it for when I bought it. Um, but it's fantastic. It is, uh, this is called Unipoo, <laughs> this fabric. Um, it is from Mystic Hand Dye Fabrics. Um, this is a specifically a piece of 32 count. I can't remember if it's 32 or 28, um, but it is a piece of opal linen. I'm going to move it around so you can kind of see the sparkle. This fabric is gorgeous. It is so gorgeous and so fantastic to work with. I was concerned about the opal because I know that sometimes opal can make it really hard to see. Um, but it's actually, it's actually really nice. The only issue I'm having is that this Q-snap is way too big. Um, so it's kind of a pain to work with, uh, at least in the way that I was trying to work with it. I may, because I, uh, I have a thing that I'm going to show you later that I was trying to use it, use it with or put it into um, and that was not working so well for me so I might have to do something different but anyway so yoga corn cell I'll try to put a picture in here for you um, it there are these three super cute super whimsical unicorns doing yoga <laughs> it is the cutest thing ever um, the this pattern is from little little room in the attic on Etsy 
and um, she actually has done three different sets of three unicorns. So there are nine unicorns in total. Um, each of us is doing, I think each of us is doing a different set of three. So I'm doing a yo yoga corns two, Rachel is doing yoga corns one, and Heike is either also doing two or she's doing three. I'm not sure. Uh, regardless, we're each doing uh, one set of three unicorns. And this is my start on that. So as you can see, um, and you may not be able to, to see all of it, but um, I don't have a lot stitched here. Um, I actually did a lot more stitching than what you see. The problem is, and you can't see the, you can't see now, but um, all this up here I had stitched and then discovered that I was half a stitch off. Um, because this is linen, I was stitching over two threads, and it turns out that at some point when I was counting, I missed one thread. So all of the stitches, all of the stitches up in this area um, were just shifted half of a stitch. <laughs> and that's not something that you can really just walk off. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to, I had to frog that and I was super sad. Um, and I haven't had the will to go back to this yet. Um, but the goal, the goal is to finish it in 2020. Um, if I can finish it before, um, December, I think that will be fantastic. Um, I might try to set a goal of like October. I'm not sure why October sticks in my head, but, uh, regardless, I will be getting back to this. Um, but yeah, so if you'd like to join us in stitching one of these unicorn sets, um, definitely tag, use the hashtag yoga corn sal. I'll try to put it down here. Yoga corn sal, S-A-L, um, so that we can see your posts on social media and stuff um, when you join along with us. You can use any fabric you want to. You can use any threads you want to. Um, there's no real rules except that it should probably be one of these three yoga corn patterns. So check that out on Etsy. Um, super fun. Rachel's much farther along than I am. Heike's even further um, because Heike is a champion. So, <laughs> okay. And now, now we have um, the last but not the least new start for May. Um, <clears throat> this is, let me get the extra fabric out of the way. This is a pattern from Ink Circles called Fleur de Lis, which is a play on Fleur de Lis. Um, so this is going to be um, a square, um, a square pattern overall. It's hard to tell because of, you got the. Eh. I don't have anything to put behind this. Okay, that's better. Um, <clears throat> So uh, this I am actually doing for some of our friends. Um, they are super big LSU fans, um, and that's Louisiana State University. And, and LSU's colors are purple, like royal purple and yellow um, slash gold. So um, rather than do something for them that specifically says LSU, I decided to do something that would pay homage to that, um, but be a little less um, in your face college football. So, <laughs> so I'm not sure if this is going to end up being a Christmas ornament or if it will actually be um, like a framed piece that I give them, but uh, that's what I'm working on this for. I really wanted to get it started because I'm hoping to have this done before Christmas. Um, I actually have a pretty decent start. I'm using, um, this fabric is a Kathy Davidson dying for cross stitch fabric. It's a 28 count linen, I believe. Um, it's this gorgeous dark purple with the modeling and everything. I mean, how, how beautiful is that? Oh my gosh, so beautiful. And I'm actually only using half of the full piece, uh, maybe even a quarter. I think it's half. Um, of the full piece. So I have more of this to work with, which is really, really nice. Um, I'm not loving, um, I'm not loving linen as much as I love even weaves, but still uh, it's very nice to stitch on. And the floss that I'm using here, this is hand dyed by Rolanda. It's a silk limited edition um, gold color. I don't know if she has a name for it, but this came in the same limited edition set that I used for my my rendition of Michelle Bendy's Be Well and Stitch Hamsa design. So I used the teal and the purple and the, I think the dark blue and the gold for that. And then, um, 
and then I've used just I'm using just the gold for this design so the entire design will be this color which I think is part of why it's working up so quickly so that is new start number eight so that is the last but definitely not the least new start so that being said so that's May that's mania that is all of mania um, and I have not worked on anything but that in May um, and I haven't worked on anything new in June I've only worked on um, stuff that I had already started so you've seen all of my progress um, since the beginning of June as well because I haven't pulled out any other whips um, I'm really thinking hard about going back to my with witchy stitcher uh, Baba Yaga um, something about that is calling to me so I might have to get that out real soon especially because okay so let's talk about plans and then I'll talk about that so um, there is something big on the horizon um, I am literally just waiting for a piece of fabric so I can't say much about it because I am doing a model stitch like honest to goodness real designer designer you might know um, I am doing a real live model stitch for um, an unreleased as as yet unreleased as a full pattern pattern um, I'm super excited about it. I feel very fortunate to have gotten the chance to even uh, attempt this, and I have the I have the threads for it. I already have the fibers for it. I'm waiting on a piece of fabric, and then I will be able to get started on it. And that is going to be my primary focus um, until it's finished. So um, I'm not going to talk about the design. I'm not going to talk about the colors. I will say that it is a um, the full design is 168 stitches by 168 stitches. So it's a it's a good size design. I think that works out to be like 10 and a half by 10 and a half on 32 count fabric, um, two over two. <clears throat> so it's going to be it's going to be a good long task. Um, and I will be working on it and providing weekly updates to the designer. Um, so that she knows that that progress is being made. So um, that's going to be my primary focus until I get that finished. Um, and that's largely because I've made a commitment to her. I want to make sure that I fulfill that commitment. Um, but also I want to make sure that I don't fall behind on it or <clears throat> let other things take priority and that kind of stuff. So at the moment I have no new starts planned um, until I get a lot of progress in on that. That doesn't mean I won't do other stitching. But it does mean that I'm going to set weekly goals for myself and until I meet those goals on that model stitch, I'm not going to work on other projects. So that will be my first priority when it comes to stitching. So no new starts for the foreseeable future. I think she would like to have her model by September. I'll have to double check my email. I think she wants it by September. Um, so after that or after I get a good amount of progress on it, then I will start looking at some new starts. Um, <clears throat> obviously I have my Gamer Nouveau obviously I did not start it in May <laughs> so that's uh, that's my eye is still on that prize um, and there's some other stitches I would like to do here and there as well but so yeah hopefully in the next few days to a week I will get the fabric for that I will get started on that I will not be posting project photos to social media. Um, I will not be discussing details of that project. Um, I have been asked to keep everything quiet. So um, that is that. Um, <clears throat> but I am super excited. So I did, uh, I did make sure that I could at least mention that I was doing it. So it's very exciting. <laughs> um, but you'll have to wait for the rest of it until it gets officially released. So that is that is the big thing um now as far as my other plans um i think for the rest of june i'm going to take it kind of easy i'll stitch on whatever i feel like stitching on when july hits i think i'm going to make july be um i want to come up with a clever a clever a clever thing for it i don't know if i'll i don't know if i'll try to do a hashtag or whatever but july is going to be the month that i try to recover my poor lost sales <laughs> so 2020 has been the year of the of the sales but i haven't actually worked on my sales in a while um so i think um in addition to making sure that my model stitch gets done i want to make july be the month that i focus really hard on getting back into my sales so um 
<clears throat> that's going to push off new starts even farther. Um, honestly, I probably wouldn't have started a whole bunch of new stuff if it hadn't been for this whole mania thing because I'm, um, once I get to have too many projects, I start to feel kind of buried. Um, so maybe in June I'll work on some of the smaller things that I feel like I can finish. Uh, get a few finishes in before July starts. July, I'm not, I won't necessarily work exclusively on my sales, but I'm gonna to put an exerted effort into um, getting back on track with some of those, um, getting them organized and that kind of stuff. So also as far as plans go, some other things that are going on, um, I think I'm finally close to actually having, um, actually being able to start moving things into my craft room. So um, if you've been here a while, you've heard a little bit about it. Um, I haven't talked a lot about it, but um, uh, I guess it's been about six years ago now, my husband and I moved into this house with my mother. Uh, the three of us all needed a new place. So my mom, um, her house was overwhelming without my stepdad. He had passed away um, a year or so before. Uh, she wasn't able to maintain it herself and she was at a point in her life where she kind of needed folks around. She needed to not live by herself anymore. Uh, my husband and I had outgrown our house and were ready to move. So the three of us decided we'd find a house together and we found this fantastic house that we're in now and <clears throat> it's got a ton of space and it was really well laid out for what amounted to two families because mom had her section of the house that was all on the main level and my husband and I had our section of the house that was up the stairs. Um, you know, so we could have separate living spaces, separate bedrooms, shared the kitchen, plenty of bathrooms, all that sort of stuff. Um, well, you know, so that's, that worked out really, really well. Um, but unfortunately my mother passed away in 2017. Um, and so that has left her living spaces um, largely unused. Um, <clears throat> we did reclaim her den about, or her living room, which we now call the den. Uh, we reclaimed that about a year ago. Last year is when I started really being able to deal with things, um, to deal with her stuff and to deal with her spaces and that kind of stuff. So we reclaimed that. And I only say reclaimed because they had, it was hard to be in those spaces because they had been hers. Um, not because we weren't allowed in them in the first place. Um, but yeah, so, so we reclaimed the den probably a year, two years ago, but her bedroom has been difficult. Um, and I'm sure you can all imagine why it might be. Um, and I apologize for getting super personal. I guess it's just one of those floss tubes. Um, but yeah, so, so dealing with her bedroom has been difficult. And I decided a long time ago that what I wanted to do was convert her bedroom into a craft room um, because I wanted to want to be in the space. I wanted to not only want to be in the space, but I wanted to turn it into something that could be creative. Um, I wanted to be where she had been and do something that gave me life, you know? So that has been my goal for a few years and it has been very slow going for a lot of reasons. And I can't talk about it because I really will get emotional. <laughs> but the point is, um, I have finally gotten to a place in myself and in my life where I have been able to start dealing with some of her stuff. Um, my husband has been a huge help and a friend of ours has been an even bigger help um, because my my husband will only push so much, which I appreciate um, because that's it's a sticky situation. Any of you who have had a close friend or spouse go through the loss of a parent, um, you kind of know where I'm at with that. So he hasn't wanted to push but so much, but he has a friend who's like super big into DIY and renovation and all this kind of stuff who is really kind of lit a fire under us in a good way um, to get some of that moving. So we've actually gotten the room almost completely cleared out. There's still a lot of stuff to deal with, I'll be honest. Like we haven't gotten rid of all the stuff, but we've managed to get rid of some of it and consolidate the rest of it and move it out of the room so that we could get the carpet up, the carpet really badly needed to be ripped out. So the carpet is almost completely gone and uh, we're at the stage now where we need to clean up, clean the um, the glue and the adhesive and all that sort of stuff that was keeping, because it's a concrete floor. Uh, that room used to be a garage um, when the house was first built and it was converted to uh, a bedroom ages ago. Um, so they put carpet down and there's all kinds of glue and residue and stuff. So we have to clean that up. 
once we get that up, we can refinish the floor. We're either gonna paint it with some concrete paint and sealer um, or put down one of those resin um, flooring things. Um, <clears throat> so once we do that, then the magic happens because um, the furniture that's gonna stay in that room will be get moved back into that room. All of my craft things from all over the house um, will finally go into one consolidated area where I can organize them and access them anytime I want. <sighs> Y'all don't even know. If you've ever noticed all the things sitting behind me, um, yeah, this is, this is a communal room that I have all of my stuff in and um, the more I've gotten into cross stitch and the more I've gotten into uh, my cross stitch business online, the more stuff has accumulated and there's just, there's not space for it here where I'm trying to do it. Um, so I'm super excited. It's a big deal. May not seem like a big deal to, <laughs> to all of you, but I'm super excited. Um, and I'm hoping that within the next month or so, um, that I'll actually be moving my stuff in so that maybe, you know, by, um, maybe not by July because we're halfway through June, uh, but maybe by August I will be filming floss tube in my craft studio. Maybe. I almost hate to put a date on it because you know how things happen, but, um, but it's feeling real. You know, it's finally feeling real. So that's really exciting. Okay guys, well that is, that's all of the stitching, that's all of the updates, that's all of the news, it's all of the everything uh, for right now. Uh, I am going to go ahead and wrap this up because it has been probably about an hour if not longer. Um, so I'm going to break this up, I will post the, um, the haul video not long after this goes live. Um, so I hope y'all will check that out as well. I know I've been keeping you waiting, so there is a ton, a ton. Of stuff. <laughs> I hope you will join me for that. Um, and also I hope you'll join me for my very first uh, knitting podcast. Um, that will be coming very, very soon too. I know that I said coming soon in my last video, but like honestly, promise. Um, in fact, I'm probably going to film it after I finish filming the haul stuff today. So if you see this shirt in all of my videos, then you know why. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm going to start putting my, my nitty stuff in a completely separate video. Uh, that way, if you're only a cross stitch person, you don't have to deal with the yarn and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, cause I think I actually have started accumulating enough things, um, that I should probably do that separately. Um, and I'd also like to get to a schedule where I could at least be giving you, um, one or the other video every week. So it's not not so long between updates and stuff like that. So um, that's all I have for you right now. Join me soon for my haul video. And in the meantime, I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying healthy. And I hope you're staying um, educated and active in your community. And uh, with that, we'll see you next time. If you have liked what you've seen, um, if you've liked what I have shared, then please hit that, um, hit the like button. If you want to continue seeing my videos, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified anytime I post something new, hit that little bell um, and you'll be notified every time I put up a new video. Um, at the moment, I don't have a specific schedule, so that might be the best thing to do. So I will see you all soon. Have a great one.